Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today I'm talking about seven stocks that I bought this week. Quite a lot of stocks, but they're all stocks I currently own and I was just averaging into a little bit more. One I bought quite heavy though, so I'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, but yeah, there was kind of like, even though it sounds a lot, it was just really nibbling into more positions that I own. You know, trying to keep that cash pile from going too high and just keep using it. I don't want to be holding too much cash, so yeah. Um, did go through the cash a little bit. Um, I did sell one stock and that was, well, I didn't sell, it was a 10% of a position that I sold. So that freed up a little bit of cash as well. And um, there was also um, the Revolve sale that I did a few weeks ago. Um, so that had a bit of cash there as well. Um, but yeah, went on and bought these seven companies. So I'll, I'll try to spend a minute on them, go through the reasons exactly why, but um, I posted this all on the Patreon last week. So if you do wanna know exactly when I do buy and sell these companies, a lot of them were on Tuesday. Um, make sure you join the Patreons group. There's a link in the description. And also if you wanna start buying some of these shares, there's a link to a Trading212 account in the description and a free trade account. And if you buy, uh, well, if you open an account through um, them links in the description, you also get a free share as well. So uh, smash the like button, subscribe for new around here, and we'll go through these stocks I did start buying. Now, as always, I've left, left a little letter for you guys to try and guess which some of these companies are. Um, sometimes some of you guys get them nearly spot on. So uh, yeah, um, have a guess and see what you what you can do really. But we'll get stuck on number one. So number one was Card Factory. So I mentioned on the free UK stocks I'm buying that I was potentially looking and buying some more Card Factory shares. I did increase my position by 10% in the end. I'm kind of on the fence, maybe I will increase it 10% more, still a little bit unsure. The thing is, is there's a trading update around the corner, so um, when the trading update happens, that will probably give me a lot more detail on what this company has ahead because this one here is a turnaround play, so basically I'm buying into this company and looking like, right, the share price has totally sold off way too much and the company is starting to put the things in plant now where the company can turn around, start growing revenue, start growing profit again, and it starts moving in a better direction. Now, as you with Card Factory, the revenue has always hysterically increased, so it's not really the revenue that's the problem, it's the profit that's the problem. And the things that they put in place now is they've uh, obviously put in more Aldi stores, which isn't really many overheads for them because they still make the cards and then they don't have to run the stores, so they should have good overheads on them. There's also the online sales, same again, there should be pretty good uh, overheads on them ones as well. Uh, the reject store, very much like the Aldi, you know, um, they, they don't have to put staff there or own the stores. Um, so when they got the, these three big things, that's what I'll be looking through on the earnings report. The earnings report is this week, or the week coming up, should I say. Uh, I can't exactly remember what date it is. For some reason, the 14th in my head, uh, 14th of January, I'm not sure if that's correct. Um, but yeah, I know it's Boohoo as well this week. So yeah, I mean, with Card Factory, we've got the trading update this week, so it's probably a big, really big week for this one. I might make a video actually talking about it a little bit separate um, from this video, because I don't want to spend too long on it. But yeah, I mean, it's we'll see, we'll have a good idea where Card Factory is at this week, and I'm hoping for some good numbers when we get them, uh, when they come out. So yeah, I did add a 10% stake into Card Factory. Number two was my new growth stock into my UK portfolio, which was also in the free UK stocks to buy, which was S4 Capital. I increased my position in this one by 10%. It's The stock's kind of been up and down, a little bit flat line for the last kind of weekish, um, but it has been on a good run, so it's good to see it cons consolidate a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, I did add a 10% stake to this one, said I would. Um, I potentially might add a little bit more into this one as it stays around these sort of prices, but yeah, um, very good earnings that came out, and it's one of those companies that I'm looking at and thinking, well, they pulled out amazing COVID numbers, so if you know more companies go back to marketing, which was one of the main budgets that got cut, then S4 Capital are gonna do really well as a marketing company. So yeah, I increased my position in this one by 10%. Number three is Beyond Meat. Now I increased this one by quite a bit. I increased this four times over the last week. Um, so yeah, there were some very big increases on them. Uh, in general, um, most of the cash has gone into this one. The reason why is that it's just been sold off a little bit more this week and I really like this company. Beyond Meats is, I believe now, my second largest position in my portfolio with having in mode as my number one, and it has overtaken Facebook now in that second place. Uh, so Beyond Meats has taken the second place and Facebook's dropped down one. Obviously as well, Facebook's been on a little bit negative run as well, so it's still pretty close, uh, but Beyond, Beyond Meats has just snuck into that second place as my large, second largest holding. And yeah, it's been downtrending because of analysts that I spoke about it a little bit yesterday. A lot of analysts have kind of come out and downgraded the stock now. And analysts are very, um, this is why they don't really beat Wall Street, because they always take in current factors and then they never plan ahead. And this is why it's so easy as an individual stock picker to beat Wall Street because you can 
plan stuff in ahead of them. Um, and yeah, I mean, Beyond Meat now, uh, all the analysts on the side of it are saying like, hey, you know, Beyond Meat, you're gonna have probably a bad Q4 uh, that's gonna come up and a bad Q1, and I totally agree, you know. Uh, the great thing about Beyond Meat, and that's what's totally different between Beyond Meat and Tattoo Chef, is Beyond Meat, you get the kind of retail sales, uh, just like how Tattoo Chef is, but Beyond Meats has major partnerships with brands like restaurants. And at the moment, a lot of them are shut. And because of that, them sales are down and it looks like Beyond Meats are putting bad numbers in. But you fast forward, you know, three, six, 12 months, a lot of these uh, brand deals that it has with like Pizza Hut and everything, them stores are gonna go back open. You know, the vaccine rollout will happen. Beyond Meat will start posting even better growth because of the new partnerships it has over the last few months with, you know, Pizza, pizza Hut, for example. And because of that, you know, Beyond Meats is gonna be in an even better position than what it was before with a lot of these brand deals. So them numbers will look stagnant for the next quarter, to uh, maybe two quarters, but after that, there'll be an explosion and everyone's like, whoa, did you see the numbers that they pulled out? And if, as an investor, you're just like, yeah, I told you so. So it's one of those, like, you got to plan ahead and when I look at Beyond Meats, you know, I agree with the analysts the same, which is the next three months might be a bit bumpy, um, or maybe even six months, but literally after the next six months, Beyond Meats is gonna explode with these partnership deals and the international growth. And Beyond Meats will go from where it's valued at now, like $120 stock or whatever it is now, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, I, think my, I think my average is like $127, I believe, right now. Uh, I would love to get it below 120 if I could, um, you know, in that, into that teen range. Uh, but yeah, I think easily, you look at Beyond Meats, and I do believe by the end of this year, we'll be talking about this company being a $200 stock easy um, I think it will get there and the thing as well about Beyond Meats it's in the fast growing industry it's the number one brand in this sort of industry as well and it's a long haul for me I believe that in five years time we'll be talking about a company that's currently like a seven billion market cap eight billion market cap and I think it'll be like a getting above 30 billion market cap so there's plenty of upside uh, in a massive growing industry and yeah I, I'm very happy with this one number four is Callaway Golf so this is my smallest position in the portfolio uh, but it's one of those that I was kind of hoping that it was gonna drop down like below $22, uh, even $20, but at the moment it's holding pretty strong and it's still going up, which is a bit of a nightmare because I do wanna buy more of this, but, and it's a smallest position as well, but I'm kind of like doing a patience game and hopefully it works out when it drops a little bit. But just in case it doesn't, and I've waited a couple of weeks and it's kind of just holding right now, I thought, right, I was hoping I was gonna buy a big chunk at like 22, uh, but because it's not doing that, um, I'll just buy 10% now and I'll wait and see what happens. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment, yeah, Callaway Golf, I'll see what happens exactly. I thought I'll just buy 10% now, see what happens, see if there's a pullback. But I thought, just average a little bit more in because even though it's the smallest position, ideally I want it to be a little bit more than what it is right now. So I thought I'll just buy a little bit more of that one, see where it goes. But yeah, this that wasn't a really big position because at the moment it's still my smallest in the portfolio. Number five is Glue, um, which is Glue Mobile. Um, so I started buying this one a while ago. Um, I was kind of hoping it was gonna drop down to like $8. It did drop down to like eight ninety, but I was hoping it more to be like the eight fifty range, even lower than that, and then hopefully like seven seven eighty. At the moment, it did dip down and it's like hovering a little bit between uh, 9 and $8. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just buy a little bit now, so I increased it by 10%. It's still one of the smallest positions in the portfolio. Um, it's a company that will not make a big chunk up just because I don't think it has like a, you know, a major upside and not a massive moat, but I still think it is undervalued. So yeah, it's a still a small position, but I thought, right, I'll just buy 10% here, see where it goes. But yeah, just thought I'd add into that one a little bit now, but I'm hoping that that one does go down a little bit more than where it is right now. So we'll see what happens here. I'm um, kind of hoping it goes down a little bit lower for me to buy some more, but at the moment it's, it's still pretty hot holding where it's at. Number six is Turtle Beach. So this stock actually um, has had a bit of a pullback. At the one point I was like up 40, 50% on this one. Um, it's now pulled back to like 15% up. So yeah, it has had a major pullback. I don't understand that you have no clue what the reason is for it um, in general. Uh, maybe it's just a short bit of short term profit taking and it's just very overextended. That could be the reason why, but I think that these guys will have an amazing fourth quarter. I think that's that will happen. I'll be very surprised if it is a poor quarter. The only one problem that I see would happen to Turtle Beach is that there's a supply chain issue and that's the only way I can see them having a horrible quarter. But yeah, I mean, hopefully these guys do pull out a great quarter. The stock, because of the stock pulling back, I was like, right, I'll just increase my position a little bit more. Um, so I increased that one by about 10%. And yeah, I thought I'll just take this opportunity while it's, you know, come down so dramatically I've like 
I'll just take it by a little bit more here. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. I mean, I think like say, I think a Q4 will probably lift it back up again. Uh, and when it gets start showing some of those PS uh, like five sales, and there's the PS4 again, PS5 sales with the you know the headsets and everything, um, everything on the website. There's a lot of headsets that are sold out, so I can see it only doing a strong quarter. So yeah, I'm pretty confident in that one. Number seven is skills. So I bought this. I saw the news after hours that Ark Invest had bought a massive stake into skills, and I thought that is like the, one of the best news that's happened for a while. I was looking at the stock and I was like. I wanted to buy it a little bit cheaper. I wanted to buy a little bit more because um, I think that skills does have the potential to maybe 5x over the next five years. But I was looking at skills and I was thinking, well, that's really positive news. The stock's probably going to go up quite a bit from this, even though it was already going up in after hours, for example. But I was like, it's probably still going to probably go up a bit more than what it's at now. And um, yeah, I thought, well, I thought I'll just take a plunge now. Uh, I'll still have a decent average. So yeah, I averaged in on skills uh, upwards <laughs> quite a bit as well, more than what I normally do. But I increased that position by 20%. It did move my average up quite a bit. So I had an average in the $15 range. Um, because of me averaging up 20%, it did shove it up into like the low $16 range. Uh, but yeah, I'm still happy with that because generally it, I'll be very surprised if I see skills drop down to that sort of position again. Um, but yeah, um, very happy to get that one in. Got it at a good time as well because it did jump quite a bit off the uh, news that ARK Invest died by some shares as well. So there's one stock that I did sell this week and I sold 10% of the position I have, which was Boohoo. So I did take a little bit of profit in Boohoo. Um, the reason why is obviously it's still earnings this week. I think earnings will be fantastic, but um, the whole reason I did sell some shares in Boohoo is because of the last dip I bought. Um, I said that every single position that I start buying in this last dip will probably go out at like a 50% gain. And that's pretty much where we got to um, in the share price. So I was like, um, you know, take that money out, free it up. Boohoo was by far the biggest UK position that I had in my portfolio. And I thought well, it's just, you know, one of those where I can use it into some more opportunities. And I don't want Boohoo to be that big of a position in the UK portfolio. I want it to be more of the size of like Greg's and Hollywood Bowl, for example. I don't want it taking up too much. And the thing as well about that is Boohoo's very volatile. Um, and like, you know, it only takes The Guardian to be um, writing an article over the weekend and the gains can very quickly sh come back down. So to have like a volatile position as my biggest um, as what it was, was definitely something that needed correcting a little bit. And also my whole game plan in the first place was when we got the uh, other dip, uh, which was the auditor dip. Um, when the auditor was stepping away, I said that everything I was buying in there was probably a little bit more of a short term hold. Whereas this other share price that I did have, that was always like the, the longer hold that I'll be holding for a longer time. So yeah, um, it was just easy money, <laughs> you know, uh, when, when it went down, I said boohoo is always easy money in the two pound, like below two, two pound 50 range. And uh, yeah, it's done, uh, move it on now to the to the next one, I guess. But yeah, uh, pretty good overall. So those are the um, seven stocks that I bought and also uh, the one stock that I did uh, sell 10% stake of the position that I did have, but uh, it's still by far the uh, biggest position in the UK portfolio at the moment. So yeah, um, we'll see what happens there, but it is reporting earnings this week, I believe anyway. So we'll see, um, it should be, should be a good one anyway. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you could smash the like button, if you are new, uh, make sure to subscribe as well, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, and I'll see you on the next video.